boost your impact. impact. There's no demand for this product. So, so what? We can invent that. Because a rapper can't help you to tell your story. and bring it hell to glory. Any message, any category. We do conferences, workshops, college classes, and birthdays. Podcasts and sales kickoffs with your workmate. Invent Rap is a platform about to be in the app store. It's your quick and easy original custom rap store. So book a rapper lord and we'll deliver the hype music and get some rappers paid for it. In other words, a bright future. Thanks for supporting. And that wrap. Welcome to Searching for the Question Live. Uh, this was a different uh, introduction, as uh, you could hear, uh, because we have uh, a different guest. Uh, we are live on Facebook, on, uh, a, on YouTube, on Twitch, and I was about to say on Twitter, but uh, Twitter changed their thing. Uh, I shared the YouTube link on Twitter, We'll see what native uh, live video on Twitter is going to be, if anything, uh, in the future. And we are also live on LinkedIn. Uh, so uh, the uh, opportunity is for you pretty unique, because what you can do uh, in the comments is to propose um, some theme, some concept, some message, and uh, our guest uh, is going to improvise a rap around it because uh, that's what he does. And um, well, uh, before uh, going to the detail of uh, what uh, event rap is and uh, what uh, it is actually, what does it mean to have a brain that is able to do what uh, our guest uh, today does? I certainly want uh, to hear more about uh, his background and about the journey that he took to 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 be uh, at the place where where he's uh, today. I am very happy and and very excited uh, to welcome uh, Baba Brinkman to Searching for the Question Live. Hello, David. It's great to be here. Good to see you again. Yeah, we uh, uh, we we met last time in in New York at uh, one of your shows, uh, which was mind blowing. I'm still um, citing it and describing it uh, to to many people. We will go back to that. Uh, where where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Long Island. I have a recording studio, media studio that I made in my basement since the pandemic, and uh, barely left the house in a year, but trying to figure out how to pivot the rap game uh, to be an online phenomenon with no live shows for so long. Fantastic, fantastic. And and uh, so many of us, of course, have had to, to cope with uh, um, rapid and drastic uh, changes. Uh, that kind of uh, adaptability uh, is, uh, I think, a fantastically useful skill. Uh, I uh, actually wrote uh, about it uh, asking myself, is being slightly maladapted predisposes you to being more adaptable because the discomfort and the unbalance that you're being not totally adapted uh, naturally implies uh, is the premise of uh, always being on the lookout of uh, where to move, what to do, in order to maintain your balance. And so when your circumstances um, force you to uh, do that, you are already uh, in a place where you can. Uh, yeah, rather I, than I, I often, yeah. to that point, I often joke in my shows that I'm the platypus of the rap game because no one knows what, what sort of species of rap category to put me into, but uh, you know, a, a highly adapted species like a platypus, um, you know, is really dependent on its local environment niche staying stable and it's on the verge of extinction. Maybe I had the wrong metaphor. Maybe I'm really the cockroach of the rap game uh, on the border of so many different niches that after the uh, pandemic apocalypse, I'm able to pivot to a new fo food source uh, more quickly than a specialist species. I don't know. I, I'm always searching for the right biological metaphors, but um, you know, this one's been a challenge. <laughs> 
and 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 mixing them uh, as well uh, obviously as as it should be because uh you you want to keep uh, your audience uh, on their uh, toes as well making sure are they paying attention without uh doing something that is uh, totally predictable uh, now let's start uh, a few steps back um how how did you embrace your being a, a rapper is that something that you always knew or there was a moment of uh, uh epiphany and then the acceptance and then a coming out ceremony yeah yeah definitely the latter of those two options i think i was in love with rap since i paid any attention to music i was a rap fan all through my teen years from sort of 10 years old until 17 or 18 it was all i listened to but i didn't write a rhyme i didn't rap myself i kind of considered myself a consumer of it but i could quote all the lyrics and went out went to all the concerts and stuff but the epiphany it was actually like midway through college i was doing an english literature degree and i had this moment where i was like what's the difference between william blake and john skelton and jeffrey chaucer and william shakespeare and john dunn and all of the rhymed storytelling that they were doing to entertain their audiences and comment on their society and notorious big and jay-z and eminem and um, Talib Kweli and I'm, I'm like listening to all these rhymed sort of storytellers in my headphones while reading the Norton anthology of English literature and the aha moment was it's the same thing what rappers do today is the same thing as what poets and storytellers have done throughout history across all cultures and when I had that epiphany moment it was kind of like two things at once the first thing was I could write a thesis about this and I did end up going to do a master's thesis comparing the poetry traditions of medieval England to hip hop freestyle battling. But at that same moment, like two seconds later, I was like, you know, maybe I could be a rapper if I put myself in a sort of literary mode and it was, you know, if I took rap and made something different out of it, made it be about the things I'm passionate about, care about and, and tell my story. But just that moment made me be like, you know, this is really a universal art form. You know, beats, rhymes, and life, the universal, like, connecting with stylized language thing. You know, that was the moment that I was like, it was a big moment, actually. I was like, now I know I'm going to work on academically for the next few years. And I was like, after that, I started to write some rhymes and, and you know, do my little poetry raps for people. You know, I, I was like, a posturing like I'm the offspring of Oscar Wilde, the foster child of Jeffrey Chaucer. Now, hip hop's a style of face here, so I adopt a style. But since my eighth year, I've been obsessed with Shakespeare and William Blake spirits. And I wait to hear a voice like T.S. Eliot's and Percy Shelley is the first to tell me just how to speak out of turn and keep my verse rebellious. And that was like 1999 raps that I was write, writing, trying to like capture all the English lit stuff. And since then, I've just sort of jumped from topic to topic. <laughs> and 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 that is how I originally discovered your art because um, I was you know driving somewhere, uh, uh, and uh, and I am guilty of uh, always uh, uh, you know uh, fixing the uh, rental cars radio on NPR. So that the next uh, redneck uh, renting it, even though it, they couldn't because it's not a pickup truck, but uh, uh, whoever rents uh, whatever uh, uh, modest compact car, uh, I I would they will have NPR preset uh, on on their radio, and and there you were. Um, I don't remember if it was an interview or a segment or whatever it was, but I do remember uh, that the album was. Um, uh, uh the uh, the one about uh, uh evolution okay. and 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 yes the segment was about how important it is to teach evolution in schools because in the us uh, unfortunately it is necessary to um confirm that fact that confirm schools should should <laughs> teach s science uh, uh as as uh, painful that is and uh, and so I was I was mesmerized uh, by how how nerdily cool I found uh, the 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 crossing of of a uh, uh, of the science topic with the uh, power of uh, popular music of hip hop. Yeah, that that was uh, that that was my coming out as a science communicator. I did literature themed raps for. Uh, close, close to 10 years 
maybe more like seven years and then and then started to um, get some scientists saying, you know, if you can explain Chaucer in rap, maybe you could explain Darwin in rap. And uh, and I've sort of pivoted in the last 10 years to, to science topic after science topic. But uh, that, you know, that project was kind of the breakout for me, for sure. And a real a real passion job because I was already pro evolution, but I hadn't thought of how rap could help to make that case. And not just rap about how evolution works or how you should believe it, but use evolution as a lens to interpret what rap is and how it works. Thinking of songs as competing for space in our hard drives or in our ears and our attention spans and our Spotify playlists. And that as a form of cultural analog of natural selection that really, you know, if attention is a limited resource, then competition is inevitable and there's going to be a form of selective retention and, and differential replication. And you know, once I got that idea in my head about how rap works, I was like, you know, this album writes itself. Rap is already about evolution and rappers are explicit about it. They're saying so, all the so, time. So you, you were not yeah. you were not simply um, uh, turning Darwinian evolution uh, in in rap songs, but you were self-referentially spreading universal Darwinism through memetic uh, means, uh, illustrating how substrate independent uh, uh, replication with variation could uh, engender uh, new complex uh, systems. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, that's not your typical topic for a rap album, but I am a literary man. I studied English lit and uh, I really appreciate recursion and metaphor and layers of irony. And, um, you know, as a Chaucerian, I appreciated that meta aspect of the Darwin project where I could rap about Darwin while making the rap itself an example of a Darwinian process. Um, and how... <laughs> How, uh, uh, what, what was the re reaction of academia at that point? I mean, it, it was great. It was really, uh, I, I made the record. I put it out and I was getting emails from scientists within weeks saying, this is so cool. Can you come perform at my college? Or how about this topic? Maybe you could make me a rap. Like within a few months of putting out the Rap Guide to Evolution album, David Buss, the author of the evolutionary psychology textbook that's used in every college, wrote to me and said, I love your Darwin record. Do you want to make one about human behavior and psychology less? And next? And I you know, that was my sequel project was the Rap Guide to Human Nature. And each of the records that I put out since then, that was 2009, has been, most of them have been like a rap guide to a new topic that some scientists said, how about this? Could you rap about this? And let's just be clear, the answer is always yes. <laughs> There's no question about whether you can rap about a topic. Rap is this extremely powerful medium that's capable of containing any message. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I've been experimenting with with the science rap, but I see it as part of a wider phenomenon. So uh, you have been also very generous, uh, releasing your uh, songs uh, that people can pay, uh, but also uh, under Creative Commons. Uh, and uh, uh, what was your experience as an artist in navigating uh, the complexity of uh, today's uh, uh, landscape, uh, being or not being uh, uh, on under certain labels, or or working with? Uh, uh, Spotify or whoever else uh, for you know whatever amount of of of, of money is possible to to gain on those platforms. Um, you have a, a nice YouTube uh, channel uh, that uh, uh, has um, you know a, a good number of views on on your videos. So uh, for someone uh, who finds his uh, niche, like in your case, um, does that translate into an audience that is able to uh, find you? Yes, but also help you and support you? Well, I, I think I'm not unique in that most of my income in the music industry has come from live shows. I think that's been the case for most you know, touring, performing, working musicians for a long time. So, you know, I do make records and I put them out, but I started in rap right around the death of the record industry in, you know, in actual stores. And then it was iPods and iTunes and, um, and then Spotify. And it seems like each of those steps has been worse for the artists that are releasing the music in terms of actually being able to make revenue with record sales. But 
um, if you if you just pivot your thinking a bit, then the reason to make a record, sure, it's to connect with some fans, but mainly it's so that those fans will buy tickets to your shows and create the demand for you to tour and perform. So over the last 10 years, it's been, you know, 100 shows a year minimum flying and driving all over the place to perform live. And I was always just about like rock the crowd, entertain the people, you know, and, and also because I'm working on academic topics, I can often get uh, a cosign from uh, a scientist or a department. Some of the some of the shows start when they're commissioned by an, an academic faculty member or they come up with, a, you know, some public engagement funding and then they commission me to write an early draft of the show. And then if I can get the right people to buy in, it ends up, uh, you know, off Broadway. And 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 uh, that is where I saw you uh, last, I think, uh, with the uh, Rep Guide uh, to Consciousness, uh, which was just uh, uh, fantastic. Uh, when I when I describe your performance uh, to to other people, I have a hard time, uh, you know, even uh, uh, believing my own memories because uh, it, uh, uh, it it was literally uh, magical to see the uh, cognitive experiments that you performed interactively with the audience while at the same time. Uh, uh, turning them into uh, rap improvisation, uh, and and uh, in in particular, uh, what was the key or one of the key uh, messages of of this show, as I perceived it, uh, is is that we live under a lot of um, illusions on on how our brain works, how our mind works, and there can be a very uh, well repeatable experiments that we can easily do uh, at home uh, that uh, highlight the fallacies of those uh, those illusions of how our attention and how our cognition can be uh, dedicated to certain tasks and then when they are overloaded uh, everything just falls apart. Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to describe a little bit uh, the crescendo of tasks that you would attempt uh, and purposefully fail at the end uh, completing yeah well you know one of the one of the experiments that we've done in a live show is uh you got a freestyle rap about whatever topic the audience gives you and actually i i did this experiment as a kind of live demonstration in uh, not in rap guide to consciousness but it's also about consciousness in a show called off the top that i did with my wife as a neuroscientist she's a neuroscientist and she would try to treat me as her lab rat so i i worked some of the same themes into consciousness but when we did it as a live experiment um, she was like, okay, let's see if you can freestyle. Let's see if you can do a rap um, that's memorized while you juggle some balls. That's a motor skill. And now let's see if you can do some numerical mathematics that's on the screen. And then now let's see you improvise. And then now let's see you improvise while you also... And then the final task that was the train wreck was always... Um, you can do a memorized rap while you type a message on the keyboard. And the message is different from what you're rapping. That is actually quite possible, like surprisingly possible. Uh, I, I remember first discovering that when I was rehearsing for a show and I was like texting friends without breaking the flow. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Different parts of the brain must be involved. But what's really hard, and I would say eventually like close to impossible, is to improvise a freestyle rap while at the same time typing or creating a message or writing because it's the, you know, it's the the short-term, long-term memory and new language generation areas, you can partition those, but if you're doing new language generation in two domains at once, that's when it falls apart. So I, I kind of unpicked a little bit of that in, in Rap Guide to Consciousness, uh, but I subjected myself to the live failure uh, train wreck um, experience in the, in the other show in Off the Top. Yes, which was, which was uh, uh, fantastic because uh, uh, your wife is a scientist as well, and and her uh, specialty is uh, the study of uh, uh, of consciousness uh, in in certain ways. So the collaboration was uh, artistically and scientifically sound at the, at the at the same time. Yeah, and you know, it, it's always very amusing to the audience to watch. You know, the confident rapper subjected, like reduced to a but babbling puddle of i can't do this task it's too difficult uh with the sort of wise scientist being like let's talk about what aspects of the brain just failed in this individual subject that I have to be married to. <laughs> absolutely absolutely so uh we have roberto and cosimo and salvo um uh, saying hello 
uh, but uh, I also invite them to uh, possibly come up with a theme. And uh, if uh, none of them are creative enough to, to do that, uh, uh, I will. Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, during uh, our, our conversation today, uh, at a certain point, you will offer the opportunity of improvising some rap for us, right? Yes, I'd be very happy to. You choose what comments uh, to push or add to the screen, and whatever pops up, that'll be the prompt for the rap, and we'll uh, we'll see where it goes. So um, let's talk about uh, your latest uh, project uh, uh, event rap. Uh, evidently, um, you just said it. Uh, your income as an artist was coming from live shows, and guess what? No live shows with uh, COVID. So um, you are reinventing uh, not only a, a new way to make ends meet, but uh, maybe uh, an entirely new field of uh, um, a, a, a new avenue for, for rap to flourish uh, in, in ways that, uh, that uh, you, you wouldn't have found if it were not for for uh, having been forced to it yeah that's it's absolutely the case and I, i'm a bit of an odd duck in hip-hop in that i've been getting commissioned to make raps on diverse topics for years you know i find a scientist i say here's the budget we would need to make a rap about this topic that you've spent your life um, researching and uh, that's your career and and often they are able to tap grant funding or department funding for a public outreach thing and so I, i've sort of i can't say i've mastered this game because i still don't know where my next project is always but i'm i think i'm probably better at it than most rappers of like getting um a commissioned rap project off the ground so i, I started event rap as a way to um, expand this aspect of the rap industry and it's, so it's obviously it's not only about live events, it's also about topics, but in practice, they're usually for some kind of event. And what event rap is, is a kind of creator marketplace, a rap creator marketplace. I've got a dozen rappers uh, signed up. They're all amazing, talented, professional rap artists that are ready to work on topics. And we're sort of just putting it out there. What do you wish there was a rap song about? And what do you do with that song? The rapper will write it. Uh, there will be a consultation process. So they, you know, they check the lyrics with you, make sure they're doing a good job. And then it could be a video that's online or it could be performed live at your event. And the main thing that I've pivoted to during the pandemic is, um, you know, I used to, David, you've seen my shows. They're like 80 minute long deep dive explorations of science topics in rap and comedy, right? I, I haven't really found an outlet for that format in the pandemic. It's a long time to ask people to just sit there involved, you know, in a Zoom. But what, is, what I've really had a great time doing and there's been lots of demand for is I will attend your event, listen to all the talks, writing a rap in the background like a fly on the wall and get that rap ready to perform as the grand finale of the event. And Beautiful. that's why I call it a wrap up. And that's where the event wrap, that's the kind of most special product that we, uh, that we offer. And I've been doing these wrap ups at neuroscience conferences. You know, I did one at a funeral a few weeks ago. They oh, had me literally like listen to all of the talks about the deceased at the memorial and do this celebration of his life wrap at the end. And, you know, I didn't even expect to be doing gigs like that, but the idea is, a rap can lighten the mood and make things special at any event, no matter how serious, no matter how boring, if you get the tone right. And so now I've got all these rappers that, that are going to do this. Um, the, the, the author of Ender's Game, Orson Scott Card, um, uh, wrote a series of, of, of books. And uh, uh, in the books, uh, uh, the protagonist travels among worlds and uh, he becomes... Uh, what uh, the the people hosting him uh, end up calling uh, the speaker for the dead, where he uh, will collect uh, the stories and the eulogies and 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 the, and then he will have the empathy and the ability to understand and then uh, uh, rap, not rap, but rap the life uh, uh, in in a way that uh, that others. Uh, couldn't um, uh, what you just described uh, made me made me think of of that uh, wonderful and 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 extremely powerful. 
uh, there has been at conferences um, a kind of a, a kind of a facilitator uh, that would do uh, graphical summaries of uh, of talks. Sketch so right? the, the yeah, of yeah, people. Car yeah, people who who would follow uh, a keynote uh, with the, with the cartoons summarizing uh, uh, in real time, and then when the the keynote is over and there are the breaks, this large uh, canvas or piece of paper would be available while you were drinking your coffee and and looking around uh, to to comment on. So what you are describing is is uh, complementary to that. Yeah. Rather than in uh, in uh, in a bi-dimensional space of a drawing, uh, in the in the linear exposition uh, of a song that is enriched by the rhymes and by the metrics and 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 your art, of course. And, um, and the commentary also becomes a sort of index for the event, so you know people can watch a five minute video and they learn all the names of the speakers and all the themes of the talks and there's little sound bites and you know rhyming couplets that can be shared separately as memes and videos and things so um yeah it's, it is definitely a, an analogy a, a cousin of the of the live cartooning phenomenon but um you know i'm gonna i'm gonna put wrap up on a pedestal as a uniquely powerful medium to distill the information from any event uh, and uh, you know what I would love to do actually is a collaboration with some sketch note artists where the rap and the sketch notes are being made at the same time and then you present them simultaneously. Fantastic, them. fantastic. So um, on top of uh, um, uh, eventwrap.com, there is also a Kickstarter that you launched uh, a few days ago going uh, pretty well um, uh, towards its goal. It's just started plenty of time for anyone following uh, to to back it which i just did by the way thank you uh, and uh, so you'd better reach the goal because i want to get my uh, my reward uh, and uh, in here uh, people can uh, of course uh, support your project and then what do they get uh, what are what are the kind of most uh, appetizing rewards that uh, you would recommend people check out here Sure. Well, I, I managed to get the wrappers to sign up for a, a, an entry early bird price of $250 for a custom rap video on a topic of your choice. So that's been a pretty popular one. Uh, those are limited. We're, you know, we're not going to be working at that rate forever. Uh, but the point of the Kickstarter was to just get a whole bunch of cool new rap videos made about diverse topics, really to just show what we're capable of in terms of uh, turning anything into a wrap. So, uh, you know, that's where it starts. Uh, if the lower contributions, you can also get my new record. You're looking at the, uh, the cover right there. So Bright Future is a collection of rap songs that I made on commission. And, um, you know, they're, it's done. It's a mastered album. And so you can get an early copy through the Kickstarter. And it's kind of a prototype, right? I'm the rapper that gets commissioned to make songs on various topics. And you're right. I am trying to sort of kickstart a whole new industry with this project, which is, you know, there's mainstream, the mainstream entertainment version of, of rap, and then there's the custom rap industry, which will be rappers making topical raps on assignment. And I potentially see that as a real growth industry. It doesn't really exist right now. Some artists are doing it uh, sort of ad hoc, and there's not a systematic way to commission a rapper to take on your topic with a lot of quality control and a frictionless pipeline from proposing it to getting a video out the other end. That's what you can do with the Kickstarter. Now, $250 for for uh, what you described, the custom rap video is an, an amazing deal. There's only a few of those available. Get them while they're hot. The prices are going to go up. Uh, wow. but, and then you can also, so if anyone who's watching has an event coming up, you can also book a wrap up and you can say, this is the date of my event. Can we get an artist and we will have someone come. It could be me. It could be one of the other artists and do this rap summary thing, which then gives you a video archive distilling the themes of your event in an original rap that was written in just a few hours uh, in response to what everyone said. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so, uh, how how did you collect uh, the other crazies uh, who are ready to uh, come along uh, on this uh, ride uh, and and uh, 
uh, are they skeptical or or as enthusiastic as you are they are crossing their fingers uh, uh, what 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 is the uh, you know uh, the atmosphere around the, uh, or within your group so they're all very excited um, but also I think they like everyone who hears about this are kind of re reserving judgment about how big it can get and how possible it is because it is really this thing I've been doing and a few other artists have been doing like when something comes in but there's no and I, I'm saying I think I can generate the demand I negotiated with the artist to establish the supply which I now have and people that I talk to about this business they're like how, you know how are, nobody's trying to book a rap to explain their topic yet because no one thinks that's even possible and my mentality is once this catches on people are going to go crazy for it because these artists are so talented and also the timing was I mean you know tragic but also perfect for this because there's a of lot of artists stuck at home during the pandemic not able to make an income from shows so I was doing these custom rap gigs and wrap ups getting paid to do it and I started reaching out to artists I know. I said, here's a video of something I did last week. You know, they paid me to come and do this. If I could get you a gig to do this, would you want to? And it's a tricky one because like a lot of artists, it's not really their brand to show up at a conference and rap at the conference, you know, and, it, and it's never really been my brand either. I've been like the science communicating off Broadway guy, but I was doing it. And so I created event rap as the kind of home for this sort of work. So it can be a separate channel. And all of these artists are underground like up and coming musicians that have music on Spotify and make their own music videos and you know I'm not trying to be the main thing they do I'm trying to create a source of income that allows them to focus on music more because they can get paid to rap and the reason they can get paid to rap is because they're being given a challenge of the topic to rap about but they're still bringing all the same skills to it so you know there were a lot of negotiations where I had to really lay out my expectations of what I needed from them and how I was planning to build this industry from the ground up. Uh, and, you know, the 12 that I'm working with are the ones that uh, that gave me the benefit of the doubt and said, OK, let's go for it. Put our names on the project. We'll help you promote it. And when the work comes in, we'll do it. And let's see if you can make it real, because it's, it's really not a thing yet we're starting this thing <laughs> well and 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 you are perfectly right as any marketplace uh, there is a chicken and egg problem that needs to be solved uh, and in certain places it can be solved one way in others another way so youtube had no problem uh being host uh, to pirated content uh, uh, until uh, there were so many people and so much content that those people could be fed uh, to advertisers and then uh, enough advertising money came in so that more content would be created just on purpose for the share of some of that advertising revenue and then they could introduce progressively uh, uh, more and more uh, tighter controls uh, against pirated content to the point where they are now really exaggerating because uh, there is very little human oversight and their algorithms uh, make uh, silly mistakes. I had uh, one of my videos uh, that was uh, taken off because my canned intro music that I took uh, literally from uh, uh, Apple iMovies, uh, you know, uh, standard uh, tunes um, was claimed by a Vietnamese account to be their uh, their 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 music instead and and the completely um, uh, the, the, the the overzealous uh, uh, AIs uh, said of course sir absolutely sir uh, David is uh, reprehensible and a, and a pirate let's punish him uh, uh, anyway uh, they resolved the chicken and egg um, by bringing the consumers on first and and you couldn't go that way because as uh, you correctly said no one organizes uh, a physical or uh, a digital event and says I wish there were a, a, a rap rap or a rap summary or you know 
uh, your your solution to to their unknown problem uh, and no one knows about it so well the problem you is known the problem is zoom fatigue and not enough specialness in virtual events um so I, you know i think once i you know the, the goal is to link this offering with a problem that's very common and say this is how you can electrify your audience and make your event unique because there will be a thing about it that was made at it and uh but you're right no one's thinking of rappers for that uh, now yet. now just brainstorming among us and uh, and those who are following uh, both live and then recording um have you started um trying to find partnerships not with events but with event platforms um let me give you an example uh, i know the founder of hopin um i i, I met him <laughs> I, and, and I will be happy to. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know if you know the story, just for our viewers. Uh, two years ago, he was a sole coder in London uh, with this idea of uh, a, a new digital platform for uh, online events. And um, some people would, would listen to him, others more frequently not. Finally, around, I think, October 2019, he got his first check from... Uh, uh, an investor, maybe 200,000 pounds or something like that. So recently. <laughs> and uh, and a little more than a year later, uh, his uh, platform is now worth uh, $5 billion. Uh, and and uh, they have been hiring um, uh, three, four people per week, maybe five people per week uh, as, as they were growing. Um, and uh, and so, um, it it would be easy to find out if they have a, a like a like a, a partnership manager uh, or content manager, and then and then say, hey, here we are, twelve uh, uh, people ready to make the events of your clients on your platform exciting, unique, different, engaging. Well, David, I'm I'm a I'm ahead of you in in one sense in that it's absolutely part of the growth strategy to create those partnerships. And I literally wrote on LinkedIn about two weeks ago to the CMO of Hop In, uh, oh, perfect. Who, who I have a mutual connection with, and I said, you know, we should talk about how Event Wrap can be a vendor for every single conference that you're presenting. I have the supply, but you know, this is a cold thing, and you know, it, like I don't have I don't have that ability to get the meeting yet, and also. Um, you know, it's such a new idea that if they said, okay, here's 500 events in the next month, can you give me a wrapper for each one? I'd have to say, nope, <laughs> not that many. Uh, so part of the reason we're starting with a Kickstarter, and this has been the sort of startup strategy advice from business advisors that I talk to, is that the unproven hypothesis behind the company is that the thing I do at events every rapper on my platform can do, other rappers can do in general. So I, w I need to get a bunch of early adopter uh, example videos from all the artists showing that they do it. Cause a lot so, of them are just main, they're just rappers. They just rap. So, so, you so your, your uh, invitation uh, to those among uh, uh, who are following uh, today, who were uh, ready to um, sign up uh, for the pledge of a custom uh, rap uh, video, Early Bird, uh, since they can pick the artist, is, if possible, not to pick you, but to pick one of the others. And I get emails from people saying, I love event rap, I've got this event, or I've got this topic, and I want you to do it. And every day I'm writing emails saying, I'm willing to, if you insist, but here's why you should give it to one of the other artists. And each of the artists has their own educational background, sort of reading habits, areas of interest, specialties, expertise. And, you know, I'm a generalist, but I'm not expert in every topic. And some of the topics I will be able to nominate a rapper for that's much closer to that space than I am. So, you know, part of this is about diversifying the portfolio of expertise because I and, and styles and literal diversification, ethnic and gender diversity, like not everyone wants to hire the white guy in his 40s to do the rap summer either, right? So there's, you know, I see a lot of potential to fit a rapper to each topic by having a whole diverse talent pool. Uh, but, 
yeah, scaling up is the plan. Uh, and I really see like what event shouldn't have a wraparound at it, you know, once the supply is fully there, if they can, a wrap summary can make every boring conference better online. Absolutely. Every one of, there's not a single one that wouldn't be improved by a five minute funny wrap summary at the end that you could share online. Uh, but none of them are thinking about this yet. So we got to scale our way up by doing a few events and then a few more, bringing in a few more artists. That's what the Kickstarter is for. Another one, uh, uh, once you are ready, that I will be happy to make the intro to is the uh, director of partnerships at Zoom. Uh, happen happen to know him as well, and and uh, you know, and I will think about uh, more because this can be a lot of fun, and 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 you know, conferences and all kinds of things uh, could gain uh, from from uh, having having uh, your and your uh, your. Uh, partners, uh, co-adventurers uh, participating. So, uh, before we forget, uh, here is the theme, and then um, you tell me if we need to um, keep conversing while part of your brain is composing. Um, I um, uh, published uh, some time ago a paradigm that builds on uh, what is now fairly well established of uh, accelerating technological change uh, represented through exponentials and Moore's law that uh, is, uh, you know, the computers becoming or our phones twice as powerful every couple of years or so. And I call the new paradigm of jolting technologies because there are some, for example, artificial intelligence or quantum computers, uh, but also others where the uh, rate of acceleration is not constant, but increasing. And that means that the rate of doubling of their power is shrinking. And uh, I have uh, um, proven the concept with data because um, three years ago, uh, Stanford University with uh, the OpenAI Foundation published a study uh, where they concluded that uh, uh, AI has been following Moore's law for a long time, but now is following another doubling uh, every four months rather than every two years. Hmm. But naively, they uh, represented it with a new exponential which on a logarithmic chart is just a new line. They didn't realize that it is not just a new trend, it's a new paradigm. And I was proven right because last year, um, about six months ago, seven months ago, the CEO of NVIDIA, uh, the most important producer of uh, graphics cards used in AI applications, to train the neural networks announced that their data now shows AI doubling in power every two months. So we went from two years to four months to two months. The doubling time is shrinking. The acceleration is increasing. The singularity is arriving. Uh, where the singularity, of course, the technological singularity is when self modifying artificial intelligence is decoupling from our uh, uh, much more sedate way of looking at the world. And uh, many people are waking up to the fact that it could be real, it could be close, and, and, and we have no idea uh, what is going to happen and, and how to relate to, uh, to, to, to a world that suddenly becomes unrecognizable around us. So that is the concept of jolting technologies. Okay, so you want me to summarize all that in a wrap now? That's the, uh, that's the challenge? Well, no, no, no. You can't you can just say... I'll do my best. Jolting technologies, and then uh, we'll see. 
Okay, no, but that'll be the organizing theme, and uh, and you, but also throw me comments, and you know, pe we have some people uh, I think tuning in live, and if you guys want to uh, drop any comments of like try to work this into the rap, feel free, and if not, David, you can uh, you, you're able to feed comments into Streamyard as well, right? So yes, take any keywords from um, the the thesis that you just presented, and okay. it's responding to them in real time that shows you that it's uh, a full okay. improvisation. So. I will, uh, I'll, I'll bust that rhyme right now. How's that sound? That beat comes through okay for you? Yeah. Baba Brinkman, David Orban, about to get you thinking. Yo, my vocabulary's deep. I'ma have to take it to the singularity. I'ma have to break AI down to the basics. It's speeding up now, that's the acceleration, yeah. Check it out, I rock a rhyme. It's speeding up faster than Hopin's bottom line. That's how it goes, I say only deep things. Can't you see this pace is just increasing? It's getting faster and faster, it's on an exponential curve. I'm just trying to capture that with my words. I'm just trying to put a couple rappers to work before artificial intelligence puts us out of work. It's gonna happen, I mean, I'm so hot, but pretty soon you're gonna hear a rapping robot. Yeah, it's gonna be deep and on the beat and probably with punchlines that are funnier than me. What am I gonna do? I mean, my career, it'll bury me. I'll be like, all right, cool, this is the singularity. The rapper's getting better and better even if it's robotic. I will have to come up with mo hot ish That means I'll have to just battle and attack it. I'm gonna have to do this real quick when I use the musical rhythm. But what you're watching is enhanced. This is transhumanism. I've got those chips up inside my brain, the implants. That's how I do this. That's how I lyrically enhance. It's going to the next level. It's so hot. That means my brain is an example of Moore's law. It's doubling every couple of years getting better and better as I come quicker with the lyrics forever it's never gonna stop that's just breaking down the basics I should rap on Mars that's space exploration yeah me and Elon Musk could just bust rhymes back and forth he would be dope I trust hopefully I mean with those rhymes he's gotta have musical talent right he's with Grimes that's how we go yes I'm rocking the basics Mars colonization is coming up soon that's the doje coin or is it doggy coin or is it just dog coin I don't know send it to the moon Elon with a tweet when i rock on the beat it's how it goes this is the flow that's so unique yeah that's right i got the beats that do bump you see the technology doubling every two months it's amazing yeah it's off the brain as i kick the freestyle that's all about the blockchain like the bitcoin like all those cryptocurrencies are they gonna crash or enhance the economy it doesn't worry me just bring another in and another in and another in we can do it with the technique turn this rap into a freaking nft it's beautiful that's the way that i rap on beats see what I'm doing is expressing my brain fantasies imagination as I'm breaking it down to the basics and you don't want to battle me I'm actively processing information in my reality like the comments on the screen that David is dropping it's scorching shout out to Mr. Orban this is how I do it my brain is full of true sparks what you're watching right now is nothing but true art yeah check it out I'm a musician hold on I got a low battery warning I'll plug my computer in there we go I just saved it ha, check it out it's nothing but freestyles that I'm blazing yeah it's live off the top it's so amazing check it out baba brickman i'm gonna stop to just save it oh uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this was a, a romp <laughs> uh it, it, it's it's awesome and uh, and and really the exhilaration, the tingling sensation comes from the fact that the impression of the people listening is that they could be also doing it. I don't know if it is an illusion, but as I am listening to the rhymes and the rhythm, I feel as if almost I could follow your food path to a certain extent. I have no idea what I'm even doing, but I'm trying to, and I am not fearing the embarrassment of failing. Well, that's one of the services that Event Rap will be rolling out before long is freestyle and rap workshops because the improvisation elements that go into just keeping the flow going and ideas coming in, I think is very applicable to the improvisation and lateral thinking needed for corporate strategy or for technological innovation or for anything else, you know, getting out of your prescribed restricted formal mode of thinking and opening it up to the adjacent possibilities and I, I really think it is something anyone can learn can they be at the elite level and, and do it in any circumstances i don't know but uh practicing rapping is good for lots of things other than performing rapping and uh 
you know, I'd say, let's do it. Let's have a workshop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm on board, absolutely on board. So, uh, let's, uh, let's make sure, uh, that, uh, the uh, Kickstarter, uh, is, uh, uh, an absolute success, uh, because this platform is needed. Uh, we need it. We want it. Um, so, um, I uh, am going to upgrade my pledge. I want to, well, I want to, no, I mean, pick a topic. The, the really fun part about this for an app right now for me is that I've had about 10 custom wrap orders come in over the past few days. And each one is so different. One of them is about the independent printing presses and how they can foster independent journalism that's not hackable or influenceable by algorithms. And another one is about cargo bikes and how they change the culture of a city. And another one is a 20th century history course the prof wants a rap summary of. I mean, the, it's such a vast range of topics. And I just, and you know, most of them, they're like, find me a good rapper for this. And I just get to play with, this is a good fit for this one. Here's your assignment. I'm sending off rap assignments to my artists. Come back next Beautiful. week with the rap video. Uh, and it's so much fun, but it's also really, I think, proving the premise that it works with anything any topic yeah. any event you can make the rap be about it baba brinkman thank you very much for uh, being on searching on the question live it's been my pleasure thanks for the conversation and i will be following up to get those uh hop in and zoom introductions yep because uh, it's part of my biz dev strategy very good <laughs> Thanks everyone for being on searching on the question live. This was really fantastic. I'm still tingling, as I said, uh, because uh, we are not accustomed to uh, this uh, level of uh, multi-channel stimulation, uh, both uh, artistic and intellectual. And the game here is really at high level. So thanks everyone. And I will see you at the next uh, show of uh, searching for the question live.